So I want everybody to turn to page 35 in your books. 35 in your book, Americana Strings. All right. At the very top, there's a blank. And I want you to write signature on that blank. Key signature. Signature. Now, what is a key signature? All right. Uh, the key signature appears on each line of your music, okay? And it usually starts with a clef. Now, because there's more cello players in here, I'll, start, I'll just show the cello clef, all right? Now, the top sharp is F sharp, and the second sharp, the bottom sharp, is C sharp. I'll write it right over here, C sharp. So that's this one, and F sharp is right there, okay? Now, what this says is that whenever you're playing on this line, if you come across, if you play an F, it's going to be sharp. If you come across a C, it's going to be sharp. Understand? Okay, so, and that appears on each line. Now, we're going to draw ovals on top of the staff. So let's all read together, everybody. Draw three additional quarter notes in each measure, except for the last measure. For a line note, draw the oval around a line, making sure that the top of the oval and the bottom of the oval are equal distances. Yes, e right, equal distances. So, for example, let's look at this one right here. I'm going to draw this oval like that. Now, that's a line note. So, I'm going to write line note right there. Now, that's a good line note because from the middle line to the top of the oval and the middle line to the bottom of the oval are equal distances. So it's proportioned correctly. So that's a good line note, okay? Now let's look at this. Is this a good line note up here? Someone tell me if that's a good line note. Yes, what do you think? No. It's not because it's not proportioned very well. Look at the distance from the middle line to the bottom of the oval is larger than the middle line to the top of the oval, and that's not proportioned. So that is not a very good one right there. This is good right there. That is a good line note. That is not. Okay, so now let's look at this one right here. Let's see if this is a good one. Is that a good line note right there? What do you think? No. No, it's not because... Look at the distance from the middle line to the top of the oval is large. The middle line to the bottom of the oval is very small, and that is not very good either. Okay, so this is how you're going to draw your line notes, all right? So now let's look at, let's read about space notes, everybody. For a space note, draw the oval inside a space making sure there are no lines inside the oval. Okay, so now let's look up here, guys, and let's draw a space note. Notice this space note, the top of the oval touches that line, the bottom of the oval touches that line. Is, are there any lines in the middle of that space note at all? Is there? No. Are there any lines? No, there's not. So this is a very good space note right there okay now let's look over here let's see if this is a good space note ready look who could tell me yes is that a good space note no. why is it good because look there's a line going through it let's remember a space note cannot have any lines going through it whatsoever so this is not good right there okay now let's look at this one. Is this a good space note? No. Well, what do you think? Yeah. No. That's not a good one either because look, there's a line going through it. A space note must not have any lines going through it. All right, now look. The first example is done for you. There are three, uh, you need to draw three additional Ds. Uh, well, first one's done for you, okay? So I'm, I'm trying to find the cello book, page 35. Here we go. All right, so we have uh, this first example is done for you. There are four Ds, and now look at this. Now, see those dashes 
I want you to write the letters of on each dash. Okay, so we're writing the musical alphabet. Okay, now after G in the musical alphabet is not H. There it goes to A. After G comes A. All right. So now if we start with D, okay, the next letter in the alphabet is what? After D. E, right. So write four E's on those dashes. And then, so let's say them together. Ready? D, 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 D. E, 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 E. F, what kind of F, what, what kind of F is that? Yes. F. F sharp. Why? Because the key signature says all the F's on this line are going to be sharp. So that's F sharp, F sharp, F sharp, F sharp. G, 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 G. Look at measure five. Everybody say the letters. A, 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 B, 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 C. C. Now, wait a minute. What is that? Is that a, a, right? is that a C or, or what? Is it a C or C sharp? What do you think? C sharp. It's C sharp. Why? Because the key signature tells us if there are any Fs or any Cs on that line, it's going to be a sharp. So here we go. C sharp, C sharp, C sharp, C sharp. And then the last one is D, 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 D. Now, when we start off at open D and go to high D, what are we talking about? We're talking about a scale. Scale. Now, this word scale comes from the Latin word ladder. So, a ladder. If you go up the ladder, you're going to take small steps going up, and then you take small steps going down, right? Okay. So that's what, that's what we did. We took small steps starting at open D and we ended at high D. That's the scale. Now we're going to go backwards down to low D. We're going to go down the steps, down the ladder, down to low D. So we're going to say our alphabet backwards. Start at high D, 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 measure nine, everybody. C sharp, C sharp, C sharp, C sharp, backwards from C sharp. B, 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 A, 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 backwards from A is, measure 12, G, 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 F sharp, F sharp, F sharp, F sharp, E, 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 D. Why is the last measure only have one note in it? Yes. Because it's a whole note it's, and it lasts for four beats. Yes, it's a whole note. It only, it lasts for four beats. Now look it, there's a fermata over the top. A fermata looks like an eyebrow with a dot for an eye, like a bird's eye. Okay, the reason why there's a fermata there is because when you play this in a round, we'll talk about that in a moment. Uh, when we play it in a round, part one will play two measures, and then part two will start, when part one gets to F sharp, part two will start at D, uh, number one. So there's two parts, and then you're gonna be playing beautiful harmony but the thing is, is part one will be ahead of part two. And so they have to hold out that last note and wait till part two catches up. Okay, we'll talk about that in a little bit. So now what I want everybody to do is you're going to draw the ovals three additional times in each measure, making sure they're perfect. Okay, make sure your line notes are perfect. Make sure your space notes are perfect. Why do we need to make them perfect? Because a composer does this. What, is, what does a composer do? Who could tell me what a composer does? What do you think a composer does? Yes. That's a conductor. What does a composer do? Anybody have a clue? Where a composer draws... Oh, they make the music. Yes, they draw the ovals. Exactly. Now... What do you think? If the composer doesn't do a good job drawing the ovals, do you think the musicians are going to play the right note? No. no, they're not. Okay? And it won't sound very good. Oh, before you start writing, wait a minute. Before you start writing, make sure the oval is directly above the letter. So you'll see the letters on each dash. The oval has to be directly above it. Okay? Now, before you start doing this, I need to do a magic trick. Abracadabra, Zali Kapali, poof, 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 poof. You are now composers. Now we're very lucky. 
we have pencils and erasers. In the olden days, at Mozart, when Mozart was composing Beethoven, Bach, they had feather quill that they had to dip in ink. And if they made a mistake, they had to scratch it out or start over. We have pencils now. We could if we make a mistake. We can erase. And we're even more lucky. We have computers. So if you have the notation software, you just press a button. Poof. The music notes appear beautifully on the correct line and space. Okay. So we're very fortunate. So you guys could go ahead. Uh, but when you're done composing, um, I'm going to draw out 100% on your paper, something that looks like this. Okay, that's gonna be your sign. That's gonna be your sign to go ahead and start playing. And I want you to play the D major scale. All right, going to high D, back to low D. And then I want you to play the D arpeggio. Now look at me for a second. This arpeggio means you're skipping notes to high D, skipping notes down to low D, skipping notes up to high D, skipping notes down to low D. What notes are you skipping? Well, look at the scale. You're going to play D. You're going to skip E. You're going to go to F sharp. You're going to skip G. You're going to land on A. You're going to skip B and C sharp, and then you're going to land on high D. That's what an arpeggio does. Arpeggio leaps. Instead of, you, instead of going up by steps, like a scale, a ladder, you're going to be leaping up to high D, leaping down to high D. And uh, the finger numbers are written there for you to help, to help you. And then after you play the D scale, I want you to play the D arpeggio. And then I want you to go to French folk song and play the D scale going backwards at measure 18. You're going to play the D scale going all the way backwards. D, C sharp, E, A, G, F sharp, E, D, E, D. It ends with E, D, E, D. It kind of repeats the last two notes of the scale. Okay, I want you to practice that. Then I want you to partner up with somebody. I want you to have a, a partner and one person, you guys, you guys decide who's going to be Partner one, who's gonna be partner two, okay? Partner one will start, and they'll play the scale. They'll go D, 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 E, 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 E. When partner one gets to F sharp, partner two will start on D. And what you're gonna be listening to is a beautiful harmony. What's harmony? Harmony means when you hear two different notes played at the same time, and it sounds so pretty. Now, make sure you remember what I said earlier. The partner one is going to finish first. So they got to hold the last note out till partner two catches up. And you'll hear beautiful harmonies. So now, if you get really good at this, then I'll let you play for your teachers in your classroom. And maybe your teachers will let you play for your other, uh, other classmates too. So that'd be fun. Okay? But I got to make sure I approve it. So, very good. You guys were great, and I'm excited to look at your beautiful compositions on how accurate, how great composers you are, accurately drawing line notes, accurately drawing space notes, and then I'll look at your music and give you 100, and then you could start playing. We want to know what unison and harmony is. Um, so let's play, uh, unison is playing all the same notes at the same time. Let's try that. Uh, playing the D major scale, frontwards, in, uh, we're going to go up to D scale and then backwards down to the uh, whole note D. Here we go. One, two in unison. One, two, three.
Okay, now I'd like to see how, um, how harmony sounds. So I'm going to have group one, you guys start, and then I'm going to bring in group two right after, okay? Uh, two measures after. So now you're going to finish ahead of group two. So you're going to have to hold that last note out until they catch up. Okay, so let's go. Let's see. Group one, let's have you start. One, two, ready, and one, two, three. Very good. Now at the very bottom, arpeggio fun, Jessica would like to demonstrate that. 